Um, I think without further ado, let's just get this over and done with. I've got a lot to say, and I don't have that much time to say it. So I think a few things I want to cover today that I didn't cover last time, mostly in regards to the new platform. I've got some things to show off to you guys. I've got the I've got the brand book that we've worked on very hard. I've also got some bits of um, sort of intermediary platform updates that we're going to be bringing in before we sort of full force push the new design out. We've got a new logo. We've got new colors. It is incredibly exciting. I think you're going to love it. But before we get on to the fun stuff, um, I did want to briefly update everyone in regards to what's going on internally. And I also wanted to air a big, big concern of mine, which um, I've noticed. I've noticed this happening a couple of times. This has been raised with me um, by one of our representatives, and it is incredibly disappointing to see that there seem to be people out there who think our representatives are somehow having a say in the internal goings on of the company to the point where they can, you know, somehow have a say in what's going on with your money directly. And we've had people contact representatives and even threaten representatives, which has just been ridiculous and disgusting, to be completely honest. So I just want to put the word out there and say that that's absolutely not what we're about. But more importantly, that's just not how we work. And our representatives, besides being, you know, a big part of the project, besides being our prime movers and besides being people who bring on board other people and whose job it is to do that full time, they don't have much of a say in the internal goings on. They don't have access to company information. They don't have access to our wallets. They don't have access to anything along those lines. So it is is, honestly, it's downright sad to see people behave in that sort of way. And one of the things I'd really like to say is that, guys, we're in this together at the end of the day. Our representatives right now are in the same boat as us, are in the same boat as you. We're all going through a change to the platform, a necessary change to the platform. And to to see people get getting so divided and to see people getting so passionate, but in the wrong sense of the word, is so disappointing because there are so many other ways to be passionate. There are so many other ways to express that. And there are also so many other ways to... To, to make a change without being negative and to, you know, make yourself heard without hurting another person. So I think the main, genuinely the main message for today is just, guys, we are in this together. As I've said on Tuesday, as I've said in my video, there is absolutely no need, there's absolutely no need to fight amongst ourselves because we as a team, the CAT team, are fighting this fight for you. And this isn't uh, this isn't an internal goings on in any way this is us versus the world in a sense this is us versus circumstance and the thing with circumstance is we don't overcome it very well when we're divided so it's just it's shocking i even have to talk about this and i even have to dwell on this at all but please 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 do not be toxic do not be mean do not be disrespectful and have an understanding of how things work try to be productive don't, you know, I, I'm saying this in a very open-ended way because I know that 99% of the people in the cat community would never even think to behave themselves that way. But nonetheless, it's a very important thing to be said. And I'll draw the line here, but I think everyone gets the message. This kind of behavior really needs to stop because it's dividing us and it's doing us no favors whatsoever. And now that that's out of the way... Um, I think we'll move on to a more general update, a uh, more positive update to uh, financial, um, pro- the progress on the finances department side is actually going pretty well. So the bulk, um, essentially the bulk of what they needed to do was in the first three months, sorry, the last three months rather, the first three months counting backwards of um, history because that's kind of where the community's experienced the most growth. That's where we've seen the most transactions, the, you know, the highest volume, essentially, of, of data that needs to be cross-referenced. And they have already gone ahead and sorted out the first two months, essentially having found nothing and no real link to Bitslato, no real link to those criminal funds. So going further backwards still, I think there's less of a chance still, really, that we 
actually come up with someone in the cat community who has genuinely been affected by this. So the question then, of course, stands, well, you know, how do we how do we process this in a way that other false flags coming up along the way, mostly with exchanges who, quite frankly, aren't very good at KYC and who, quite frankly, tend to, you know, to sort of shoot first and ask questions later. Um, how do we process that? And the answer that we've sort of come to, the consensus we've come to, is we just need more dedicated support people to work with CAT community members on this issue and to essentially just try and boil down the amount of data that needs to be presented and to try try to, what's the word, just simplify the process of, um, of um, essentially a counterclaim and to walk the community through that because there really is no sort of, there really is no other way to do that directly. The only other way to do that would be to, you know, on an individual basis, go and contact that exchange with all the reference material and say, look, this and that. And at that point, you're fighting on your own, which isn't where we want to put any of the CAD community members. So, of course, we've essentially decided that this support idea needs to be extended and we've hired more support people. We have trained more support people. That's part of the part of the process we've been going through for the past month or so. But we are now at the point where we've got support working overnight and sort of almost round the clock. So at any point you message them, of course, they'll be backlogged. It doesn't necessarily mean they'll reply to you at that exact time. But at any point you message them, they will be replying to someone at that time. So we are now at the point where our support team is running entirely round the clock. So rather than having a, you know, average response time of, say, five minutes, ten minutes and having certain times where you'd have to maybe wait overnight for a response or having certain times where you maybe have to wait a couple hours for a response because they're really busy. We're now at a point where, of course, with the exception of, of super busy times, actually our support team is capable of answering around the clock, which I'm really proud of and I think is essential and has actually been one of the growing pains that we've had with the project from the start is we could never really get enough qualified personnel on the line to actually answer questions in a productive manner to actually troubleshoot with the cat community in a productive manner. So say, you know, you contact them, you have a problem, that problem could be caused by multiple different factors. And it's their job to assess which one's the most likely, which one you should try first, to guide you through it, to be friendly. All of these things, you know, they require training, they require understanding, that doesn't come overnight. So I'm really quite happy with where we are at with support right now. It's going to get even better still. Again, it's a matter of training personnel, as I've said. So it's always a sort of growing process and it's somewhat of a snowball too because once you have enough people who are well-versed in the ins and outs of the project, who are well-versed in the different, you know, different themes essentially that crop up in support and different issues that people might need assistance with, then those people could start training other people themselves within, say, the call center or within just a group chat if we've got people working from home. It's a different kind of, we've gone with a mixed kind of setup, again, to just facilitate this overnight sort of 24-7 kind of response time. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, our support is one of the things that we are pushing very hard right now. And again, it's obviously seen a ridiculous influx of requests over the past week or so due to what we've been going through, but it's still, you know, it's still getting better and better. So that's one of the things I did want to bring up is there's things going behind the scenes that you may not necessarily see, but with support, it, it is one of the things that we are pushing very, very hard. Um, the other thing that I did want to go over quickly is, I suppose, details, a bit more details regarding Vitzlata, what's actually happened because I feel like a lot of people um, may still be a bit at a loss in terms of the, the ins and outs of it. Uh, I'm going to start screen sharing now and I'm hopefully not going to crash out of the meeting this time. Uh, just bear with me. Um, okay, I think I'm on my screen.
Right. Um, we are having the same issue. I think it's the resolution of my monitor causing this. I can't really think of anything else. Um, just bear with me. I will be back from my browser. Right, okay. Um, hello everyone. I hope everyone can hear me again and everything is good again. Um, let's just start where we left off and let me just share my screen. Um, there we go. Share. Right, okay. Um, so back to where we left off. Uh, essentially, I'm just going to have a scroll through these articles for literally 30 seconds and just waffle on about what's happened with Bitslato. In a nutshell, it was a sort of pseudo-criminal uh, exchange that processed a ridiculous amount of a ridiculous amount of funds as its percentage. You could see here um, somewhere in this. I don't I don't remember which article specifically had 46% um, written on it, but it was 46% that they had um, processed, sorry, 46% of the total money that they had processed that ended up being linked to <laughs> illicit funds, which, I mean, isn't a very good ratio, isn't, you know, isn't something that you could just sort of wave off and say, yeah, this was coincidence, this was, you know, slipping through the net. Um, yeah, almost half of all, it's a lot of transaction linked to criminal activities, doesn't say 46% there, it says, oh, there we go. About 46% of the assets. Yeah. So essentially what this meant for the entire industry, especially for the proximity with Binance specifically in this situation, is it meant that essentially no one really knew. Um, no one really knew how much of the Vitslato money was legitimate, how much of that money had serious implications, serious legal implications for whoever was processing it at the time, whoever was holding it at the time, because... Again, even though it gets passed down, as we all know, you know, if you buy a stolen car, that car is still stolen. That car is still going to get repossessed, whether you bought it knowing it was stolen or not. And much the same goes here, although most of the funds weren't stolen. It's more of a case of money laundering. It's more of a case of illicit money. But the principle still stands. You essentially there won't be anywhere near this stuff as a both as a business, as an individual. It's just, you know, it, it's it's a formality. But at the same time. It's just kind of how the world works. It's a formality we have for a reason. We don't want to be enabling criminals. So, in a nutshell, this has triggered Binance to do what we're doing, except, of course, Binance, even here it says um, that Binance has blocked some accounts amid the Vitslato case. 
and that's kind of you know that's kind of not just Binance doing this. It's a lot of the other exchanges that had a knock-on effect, either by proximity to Binance or by proximity to its latter itself. So it's 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 a sticky situation that we really have no way out of because, as you know, as we've detailed very very clearly, we are trying to have a squeaky clean legal record as we build up towards the cat fund. And more importantly than that, just in general, we're trying to have a squeaky clean legal record for two reasons. One, it's beneficial to the community. It's beneficial to us as a company. It's just, you know, it's it's basic it's business 101. You don't want to be on the wrong side of the law. But the second reason that it's so, you know, the second reason that it's so beneficial to us to have this squeaky clean record is because in crypto in particular, legislators tend to have a disproportionately heavy hand to the weight of their brain. They tend to sort of shoot first and ask questions later a lot of the time. And that's not a risk we want to take because as you know, as a community driven initiative, we're not playing around with our own money. And we're not playing around with big investor money who is going to, you know, pull some strings and make everything be fine. That's not how we work. We're a community driven initiative. We can't just be taking these kinds of risks and we can't just be kicking the can down the road because, well, as always, you will run out of road. So it's, I've said this before and I'll say it again, it was a necessary circumstantial decision that we had to take. I stand by that decision fully and really, you know, there's not much more to say to that end, but I just wanted to bring up a couple of articles and I just wanted to show you guys um, what's going on, what uh, sort of the digital footprint of the situation is. Obviously, this is on the Europol website. You could just put in Bitslato into into your search engine. Just have a read for yourself. Really, there's nothing there's nothing special here. It's it's essentially just what we've described it to be. Uh, moving on though, onwards and upwards. I think now it's time that we sort of ditch that theme and we talk a bit more about what's going on with the platform. What's going to go? What's going to be going on with the platform and how are we going to grow past this setback to essentially just, you know, come back even better, even stronger and somewhat adjusted to a more mainstream audience too with the lower percentages. But um, essentially the one thing I want to really make an accent on today of the presentation that I didn't really, I glossed over it last time because last time I was so focused on our new numbers. But we are also going to be adding a live trading bot onto the website. And as you can see here, it's going to look something like this, or alternatively, I'll get onto it later, but um, we could have um, a line like this as well. We haven't um, entirely finalized exactly what it's going to look like, but the premise of it is finalized, the code behind it's finished. So it's all well and good, it's just a matter of digitally integrating it, visually, sorry, integrating it into the website. Um, <laughs> God, I mix words a lot. Um, okay, okay. Back on track with the bot. Uh, showing you the graphics. I'll show you the graphics again later. But um, essentially, the idea with this bot is to have real-time live accountability. And what I mean by that is, of course, there's going to be a delay. We're going to put certain, you know, safety measures in to make sure that people can't just go on there and just throw a web socket, copy exactly what we're doing, because that, that's basically. But that's basically how we work here with this bot is it's just the WebSocket to the Binance order book and then it calculates arbitrage opportunities. Of course, this one doesn't follow through with the arbitrage opportunities. This one's sort of a, you know, a to boil down display version of the bot, but it's the same premise and it's the same, it's the same mechanism. So really we don't want to make this, you know, we don't want to make this exactly functional because we're just then putting out company secrets for everyone to see. But in a nutshell, yep, this is essentially going to be an overview of how we work. It's going to feature live updates, of course, somewhat um, adjusted, but you know, only in only in the time frame in which we serve them. It kind of is the idea here, you know, sort of like a Twitch stream or like even one of those sort of more old-fashioned exchanges with the big boards, you know, that you see Wolf of Wall Street style. Um, we're just going for we're going for that kind of feel on the platform once you actually get onto you know once you actually get onto the um well the platform rather than our website we're going for that feel of live 
trading, live interaction, because I think it's one of the most important things to drive home is business never stops here. And 24 seven, someone somewhere is sitting and monitoring the hundreds. And I really, I mean, hundreds of transactions every minute. So that's what it comes down to. Again, the bot is a vote down version, but this is what we wanted to add and why we wanted to add it. Um, I guess the bot being covered, uh, I did want to add a bit more to the bot, but I'll come back later. In the interest of time, I'll just quickly gloss over what I've shown on Tuesday, which was, of course, our new percentages for the CAT bonus and also our new percentages for the CAT platform itself, our rewards. So we've taken them down a notch. We've made it more sustainable as we move towards incorporating ourselves and diversifying from just being an arbitrage platform. It's important that these numbers kind of scale with that and scale with our ambitions. Um, in regards to the CAT bonus, again, we've taken it down a notch, but we've kept the top heavy idea where the first two, three levels are really what you want to be working towards because the idea isn't that you have, you know, hundreds of thousands of millions of people. The idea is more that you reward yourself for bringing on your close ones and for bringing on people you love and care about. The idea is that it's a, you know, it's a little thank you from us, basically. And that thank you has to be proportional to your direct contribution if it were so you know that's why we've kept it sort of exactly as it is but just toned down a little bit um if um what else did i so i'm having a really hard time i'm having a really hard time thinking back to tuesday and trying to um yeah Right. I'm sorry about that. I just got a phone call. Um, cool. Okay. So we've gone over the percentages. We've gone over the new smart contract. Uh, back to the bot. Essentially, all I really wanted to say is this isn't um, the full mechanism. This is a part of the mechanism. Essentially, the way this would usually work is you would have one more um, you'd have one more step to the process, which is just the execution stage, which essentially is, you know, you go back, plug the data that you've... So the first step, okay, I'll explain this step by step. I <laughs> I haven't really set myself up well for the explanation. Uh, the first step is sort of getting data directly from the order book on Binance through a WebSocket into the bot. And the way this works is essentially think of a live stream, think of, I don't know, Twitch, YouTube, whatever it is, that's feeding data to you live from another, just another source, I suppose, of data. And in the same way, this would, um, this would feed directly prices live from the Binance order book into our bot. Now, the second stage of this would be to then compute for triangular arbitrage opportunities, which essentially, in a nutshell, is just very basic, very, very basic maths to find an opportunity that would let us make money by transacting from one to the second and then to the third and then back to the first, which is what triangular arbitrage is. You also have reverse triangular arbitrage, which is essentially, so you have forward triangular arbitrage, which is what I've described. You've got, you know, you've got currency A that you exchange to currency B, then you exchange currency B to C, and then C back to A, that's forwards, that's traditional. But then you have reverse, which is the opposite of that. Essentially, you're short selling when it's high instead of selling when it's low. Sorry, the other way around. You're, yeah, you're short selling when you're high instead of buying when it's low, and then you're buying when it's lower, essentially on another exchange again, but you're just doing the same process in reverse, and that's what reverse triangular arbitrage is. I hope that makes sense, and if it doesn't, I'd be happy to um, think of a better explanation because I don't, um, yeah, I don't tend to explain things too good. But the third step, of course, of the process would be 
tacked onto that is just then, you know, once it's found an opportunity, plug that into the trading API and actually execute the trade. The most difficult part of this is the speed with which it needs to happen, which we've worked very, very hard to optimize. So say, you know, WebSockets could do like 80 messages per second, or they could, you know, so sort of 10 milliseconds a message, which just isn't really good enough for us. We want the whole thing to be you know, over and done with in five milliseconds. And so there had to be a lot of optimization that went into that. We had to rent servers very close to where servers of those exchanges are to just, you know, minimize that even further, cut that down. There's a lot of there's a lot of little things that little details that go into optimizing it. But in a nutshell, visually, you are getting the gist of exactly how we work. Mm. There are a few there are a few more things I want to add, but I don't know if we have the time because I'm getting a lot of questions here as well. Um, I'm getting them forwarded to me now. So let's just go over the design and then I'll answer you guys' questions. And then I think we could call it there. Uh, let me have a look. Okay, so first things first, the brand book. This is the new brand book that we've had, um, we've had in the works for quite some time. And this is a complete reimagining of our platform from the ground up. Color scheme, fonts, drawings, everything has been completely rethought and completely redesigned to rather than, you know, represent Cat the way I saw Cat when I was just founding the company and when I was just sort of, you know, putting down, laying down the groundwork. It, this is this is here to represent Cat the way that Cat is today. This is here to to really, especially the logo is here to drive home a message with that lightning bolt, the message of energy, strength, as it says here, the message of power, and the message, of course, still, you know, of the cat. <laughs> it's still a paw. It's got a lightning through it, but it's still very much a paw. So I like, I very much like this logo. We've had a few designs come in that were nowhere near as good. So I'm very happy with this. I'd like to know what you guys think too, of course, but um, I'm personally super, super happy with this. So I guess let us know. Let us know. I'll be having a read as well of all the feedback, but um, more of the logo. Um, yeah, so here it is on different here it is on different backgrounds. These are the colors we'll be looking at. That's all more bright. So we've taken the same gradient feel, but we've made it a bit more bright. We've made it a bit more colorful, a bit more energetic. You know, this looks like something that's like a Lucozade advert or like a, something sporty, something vibrant. We, we really wanted to we really wanted to move away from just the purple to a, a brighter, a brighter and more sort of full spectrum design. So here you see, of course, just logo construction, little bits and bobs that don't really need to um, don't really need to dwell on. We go minimum sizes, and now we've got the color palette. So essentially, just scrolling through this, as I've said, these are the colors. Of course, we've still got our gradient, which we'll be using quite a lot. But um, as I've said, yeah, we've reimagined it to be a lot more vibrant. Typography, again. So we've got some new fonts that we've been thinking of that we think would look much better with this style. Um, our current font is great, but it's important to have more than one. And again, I think this, you know, when you design something around the font, it just looks so much better. And this has been designed around the fonts that we're using. So uh, it, again, in my opinion, it's just such an elevation. It's just such a step up. I absolutely love this stuff. Like the, the, the moment that this game in finalized, I, I was honestly so, so excited. Like, look at this stuff. Look at this stuff. Does this not just look so much better? Is this not just such a massive step up? And then, of course, we've got elements, so we've got different, you know, like, this is what a poster would look like, this is what a pen would look like. So these guys have really gone out of their way to think of everything, to think what it would look like on different materials, to think what it would look like as merchandise, to think what it would look like, you know, outside the context of the platform, outside the context of media. So, like, you know, just little mock-ups, hoodies, shirts, all sorts of things, passes. It is a very detailed, this is a very detailed brand book. And I'm honestly, I'm very, very happy with how the new designs came out. So. Um, 
I think with this, yeah, oh, there we go, now it's scrolled. Yeah, it is very, it is a massive file as well. Like, you could zoom into this thing and it'll take ages to even zoom in. And you can see how, how clear everything is. This literally took like 20 minutes to open. It is a ridiculously big file, but hey ho, the things we do for good design. The other thing, of course, um, is intermediary updates. So, the bot we want to push out ASAP, and here it's sort of a mock up of how it would look like on the current platform. Obviously, other things remain more or less the way they are, um, but here, so this is the concept I'm most fond of. We've had a few, it was the one in the presentation here as a sort of pop up idea. It's one of the ideas floating around as well around the office, but this is the one that I've really, this is the one I've really come to, you know, I've really come to um, prefer, I suppose, over the other ones, is a sort of live scroll slash, um, I suppose, maybe it'll not scroll. We haven't decided how we're going to animate it yet. Maybe it'll flash, maybe it'll scroll, maybe, it'll, you know, there's, there's ways of doing it really on the, on the front end, but it, comes down to this idea of sort of top and bottom bar, sort of header and footer kind of thing, where you'll have live updates coming in about the community down at the bottom and about the trades up at the top, which again, I think is really, really neat. I think it adds a vibe of, you know, it adds a vibe of live goings on. It, it really drives the point home that right now, as we speak, we are trading, we are in business, we never stop, which is such an important message because you know, it's just not, it's so out of the ordinary in the traditional finance world that you have a 24-7 <laughs> global operation. Of course, it's not too out of the ordinary on a scale when we're talking about banks, so we're talking about, but in, in the sense of, you know, in the sense of this kind of community-driven uh, grassroots initiative, it is very important that we drive the point home that we're always here and we're always working because otherwise, you know, Otherwise, people just don't don't understand it. They don't expect it. It's not the industry standard. So this is part of the reason that I've really, really, really enjoyed working on this um, design with our designers. And part of the reason that I really think it's essential we add this even before we have the new platform finalized. Now, talking of the new platform, that's the wrong window. Talking of the new platform, uh, here is a brief look at that. I won't really zoom in or go over the text because, again, none of this is finalized and this is more at the, this is more at the design stage. This is a Figma. This isn't, we'll be looking at um, all sorts of things. We want to have a lot more, you know, we want to have a lot more involvement from our individual community members. We want to reflect that on the website. There's a lot, there's a lot of new things that we're thinking of adding. None of this is final, which is why I'm not really zooming in. We want to have more of an information section. We want to have more about the team. There is so much more to add and there is so much more work to be done that I'm really looking forward to doing. And essentially, you know, part of the, a big part of the process so far with the new platform has been brainstorming all of these things, has been formalizing all of that brainstorming into something that actually, you know, you could present to the rest of the team and you can discuss as an idea that actually, you know, is, is already in process. An idea that's more than an idea at this point, sorry, is you can discuss it as a, as a, as a proposal rather than an idea. Um, so yeah, yeah. I really just wanted to share this very quickly. This one here, is more about you know more about accountability than anything else this isn't something we'll be implementing tomorrow by any um stretch of the imagination but i think it's so important that you guys know what we're up to and i think now it's so important that you guys let us know what you think because to be honest i i am incredibly excited by it. it's such a revamp do you know what i mean it's just a new vibe it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's the start of, it's the start of even more good things for us. It really is. This, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm smiling right now. I find it even hard to talk. This, honestly, even if we go back, to the, I've closed the brand book, haven't I? Um, or I'm dwelling on this for too long, way too long. Um, yeah, the last, um, the last thing I wanted to show you is this, which essentially is some concepts we've had for the new, um, the new platform internally so that was the website i've just showed you 
but this is the platform. And again, this is based very heavily off of my, um, you know, off of my thought process that you need to drive the point home that this is this is all going on now. That this isn't something that's somewhere behind the scenes and you get paid interest once a month. This isn't some you know bank with an easy UI that no one ever really has to um, you know think past. This is a real platform with with us sort of you know hamsters in wheels behind the scenes doing doing all of this um i i think you can't see my mouse actually i've just realized i've been mousing over things this entire time um yeah essentially i think that's that's the end of the show and tell really and we'll move on to the questions just seeing as we're coming up to quarter two and i'll probably have to leave around five okay so I think we, the first question is uh, this. You've already seen this because I've accidentally closed out of a window. But a lot of people have been asking me where exactly did I get the mask. Um, essentially, when we were just starting up the project, when I had to think of how I'm going to brand, brand how I'm going to brand myself, how I'm going to put myself out there, um, how to you know how to play on the anonymity um, in a way that adds to the brand, in a way that adds character and in a way that sort of adds charisma. When I was just going through that thought process for the first time, I had had the idea that seeing as we are CAT, crypto arbitrage team, but also CAT, I should go with a CAT mask. And we ordered, um, I think, six or seven, some ridiculous number of masks. We ordered a few of them and we just picked this one because it looked the best. We returned all the others. But yeah. That's that's the short story of, of how I got the mask. I mean, I think if you just look up Party Hop, it seemed to be the name of it. So, I mean, if you look up Party Hop Siamese cat mask, you should be able to find that this obviously is in the UK. So, across the world, I'm not entirely sure. But, yeah, this is the mask. That, um, this is the mask that I'm using. I've had to cut a lot of holes in it. I've had to cut incisions in the back and around where my mouth is just so I could breathe and so you can hear me. But it is actually still ridiculously difficult to breathe in this. It, it, I'm not wearing it right now, which is why I have the camera off. If I was wearing this for 40 minutes for an hour, I think I'd actually die. So <laughs> definitely not, uh, definitely not uniform at the office by any means. But yeah, there's the mask. Um, let's have a look at the actual questions now, because this one, this one really stuck with me. I. <laughs> I really like the fact that you guys like the mask. It was um, it was a quick decision, but at the same time, I think it was a very good decision to, you know, put the mask on and put myself out there. Because we could have gotten spokespeople, we could have gotten, you know, we do have representatives, obviously, but I could have had someone personally represent me. There's other ways of doing it. But I, I think, yeah, I, I think I like the mask. I've always liked the mask, and I'm glad you guys like the mask. So there it is. There's the mask in all its glory. And for only £16.99, it could be yours. Right. Um, first question from Nan. Will the accumulated rewards be taken when the contract goes live? No. So the whole point right now is that we are undergoing a audit. We are not by any means stopping the platform. We're not by any means stopping trading. And as we are still trading, we are still generating new profits, which means when the platform goes live fully again, you'll be able to withdraw all those profits, you'll be able to reinvest all those profits, you'll be able to do whatever it is you really want to do. And this is what I sort of briefly glossed over on Tuesday is don't, you know, don't focus on the negatives because at the end of the day, sure, this is a, this is a bit of a holdback for us, but we were due to launch um, the new numbers, we were due to launch the new percentages already by sort of the start of February. So in three days time, latest would have been when we come out with the update. But now you've got a little bit of extra time with the old percentages. So don't focus on the negatives too much and think of it more as, you know, time that you get right now that you wouldn't have otherwise had to enjoy the 3% or 4% or 5% or whatever bracket you happen to fall into um, before, before that goes away. Of course, if you'd like to add in some more money, for that period then you can but it's only now we're looking at around a week so the change is coming soon and really you know um essentially i guess if you've missed it you've missed it at this point but yeah hope that answers it um how are the customers from the usa affected by changes well we don't actually operate in the usa 
um, just because U.S. regulators are the worst. <laughs> like, I'll be honest, U.S. regulators are just the bloody worst. So in terms of how U.S. customers specifically are affected by the changes, I mean, in the same way as everyone else, the whole sort of, our whole mantra has been that we're trying to, you know, we're trying to be very global. And we're trying to be past the reach of any specific nation or any specific legislator or anything like that. So really, you'll only be affected in the same way as everyone else, which is that you have to wait for a little bit to withdraw your profits. And, and that's about it. And the platform works exactly as it always did. Um, <laughs> Timothy wins. I think we should sell the cat mask for 25 BNB. No, no, it's it's 16 pounds 99. That's about um, that's about what 0.06. I don't know. 0.006. Sorry, that's I. Well, it's nothing. It's nothing serious. In terms of in terms of a cat clothing line, well. I did just show the brand book with hoodies and shirts and pens and other things. That was obviously mock-ups, but I am, you know, I am considering this. We do have shirts when we have yacht parties and other VIP events. You know, we bring out shirts and posters and all that kind of stuff, but that's just formalities. And as we go further down the line, of course, as the new, um, as the new design language is integrated into the entirety of our communications, so like new platform goes live, everything on social media gets rehauled, YouTube gets rehauled. So once we're past that hurdle, we could have a look at, you know, we might sell a shirt, we might sell a hoodie, we might sell a cap. Why the hell not, honestly? Like, if, if people want it, we'll sell it. It's as simple as that. If you guys, you know, if all of you guys want a hat, if all of you guys want a hoodie, I mean, hell, why the hell not? Raise your hand right now if you want a crypto arbitrage team shirt or hoodie or, I don't know, cap, anything like that. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. Yep. 20 people, 25 people. Jesus, 30 people. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Clearly 40 people. That is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. I didn't think, I didn't think that many people would want one. That is 50 people, 60 people. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I get the point guys. I get the point. Um, We'll, we'll come out with something at some point. Uh, we'll, it, it has been discussed before, and it's just one of those things that, you know, it goes on the back burner very, very much so for, for well, we've just got bigger, we've got bigger fish to fry in the meantime. But we will. Sooner or later, we will. And that is, <laughs> that is I suppose, a promise, because I, I kind of want one as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, next question from Vin. Uh, this is the new plan, CAT 2.0 fixed until the end of this year. Project, or is there still more changes like reduction in the rewards percentage? Um, so the new plan is a two-tier um, plan. Essentially, we are going to have a second reduction to 25%, but it will be a gradual reduction rather than a big jump. 25% monthly, that is, from 45% monthly, which is what we're going to do now. Um, essentially, in terms of... Is this going to be right? Sorry, I keep getting messages. Um, is there still more changes like reduction in rewards percentage? Well, yes, but not in the same way and not as um, not as suddenly, I suppose. We did want to have this big jump because we're moving to a new platform. It made sense because you know it it, it has to it has to happen either now or later. So we kind of just did it with the new platform it's a new look it's a new feel and it just makes more sense at this step of the this step of the journey um will our version one rewards not reinvested be available at the same amount or the new site not recalculate a lower percent can we draw them on february 9th um right so will your version one rewards be available well again as i've said already i'll gloss over this because i think i've already pretty much answered this but um your rewards are staying at the old percentage once we have you know once we have finance back then then your rewards are yours to withdraw or to reinvest though again you can reinvest them now too so really like if you're trying to compound um especially on the old percentage you should be trying to compound but if you're trying to do that right now there is no real reason to um to wait for people to come around really compounding is something you should be doing daily if you are going for that so um yeah i suppose the answer to that question the short answer is yes you will get 
the old percentage rewards when we make the you know when we make the jump is when we make the jump but until then well it's it's business as usual as i've said um from ashitosh sharma how many years your company will do business in crypto market can i do business with cat for lifetime of course you can and <laughs> as long as crypto market is yeah that is couldn't have said it better myself that is exactly what crypto arbitrage is about as long as there are cryptocurrencies there will be crypto arbitrage as long as it's decentralized as long as there's plenty of exchanges there's plenty of players at the table there will always be crypto arbitrage uh, it's really as simple as that so yeah i suppose the answer to that question is yes as well uh will we see some extra percent as per daily trading from rastis lab um will we see some i don't i can't say i understand this question too well I'm assuming you're referring to um, assuming you're referring to bonuses in regards to um, so yeah 2.2 2.7. This is essentially you're going to have a base um, you're going to have a base bracket and then you're going to be paid bonuses based on your contribution your deposit. Um, I I can't say I can't uh, wrong tab. I can't say I understand the question too well. I'll be honest. Uh, a lot of cat. Ask a question. Yeah. From OMOT. Why don't cat give one-time bonus of 10% rather than a multi-level bonus program, which means substantial portion of profits and let me invest a small percentage of ROI? Um, again, I can't. I can't say I understand. I can't say I understand this one too well. Um, really if you're asking about so why don't we give a one-time bonus for bringing someone on rather than a recurring bonus it's very simple again it's about you know showing it's the same reason that we've gone with it's the same reason that we've gone with this sort of breakdown where it cascades down is because you want to show proportionally to sort of how much we value um, how much we value your contribution. So say if it's a direct contribution, if you've brought someone on, it's 10%, then 7%. Then, so it, it's about it's about continuously, you know, because the money is always in the arbitrage cycle. The money is not going to go somewhere. Even if you withdraw it, um, sure, at that point, like you're not going to be reinvesting, you're not going to be getting a cap bonus. But the the whole point is to reflect the fact that the change you've made by bringing someone on is continuous. The whole point is to, you know, to 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 have that built into the platform. And in terms of small percent left investors with a small percentage of ROI, I, again, if you're referring to like whether the percentage is taken out of of people's investment, no, it's just a bonus that we pay on top. So part of the reason we've had to nerf it is because a lot of the the bonuses we were paying were coming out of our 20 million. Excuse me. Um, we're coming out of our 20 million that we were trading as founders, so it's just one of those things we had to dull down a notch, mm, just to you know, again make it more sustainable. Um, questions. I got these sent to me, so I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not actually in the group chat. Oh, someone commented. Yeah, so Binance says it has already unblocked 90 percent. Yep, that is correct. Binance did indeed comment that. However, again, it could be a matter of, of um, you know, certain um, certain blockages not being tied to this. Could be a matter of certain things being held private. So I wouldn't celebrate too ecstatically just yet. But at the same time, again, we are talking about Binance, who are the best of the best. So they'll be the first to, you know, they'll be the first to iron this out. And again, on on the, you know. On the tail of that, I suppose, we also have the good news that actually we've managed with our support and with the help of the cat community, with the cooperation of the cat community, to also unblock some people who have been blocked by exchanges. Of course, Binance being the main one here, but um, we got through the first batch of support requests successfully. And we now have people whose funds have been frozen, whose funds are now unfrozen by exchanges. So it is moving. But it's just moving, um, you know, at the rate at which very formal, uh, the rate at which very formal and boring things move. <laughs> no other way to put it, really. Um, right, there is another question. Last question. Oh, there's five questions from Raj Kumar. Okay, 
Uh, I think I'll go through this one and then that's probably the last one I have time for. So can we see auto reinvest option in the new CAD system? This has been asked absolutely endlessly. And on the uh, smart contract that's coming out now, we won't have it, but we will, it, it, we've been considering it. It's just one of those, you know, it's one of those things again, that's not at the top of the priority list. So it kind of, it floats around, but I can't, I can't promise it at this stage of development, unfortunately. Um, can we have extra bonuses or rewards like iPads, laptops, etc., based on companies' daily profits, people who are building teams? Since it will be a boost to grow the business, it will motivate members to create big teams. Um, to an extent, I agree with that, but I think one of the one of the most important things with giveaways, one of the most important things with prizes, is that anyone can win. And I think the format in which we conduct it right now is kind of more appropriate than just you know giving it to certain people and making it a case of, of being noticed because I think there's something inherently unfair um, or at least there's something people perceive as being inherently unfair about that kind of thing and I really don't I, I don't like being unfair I think you know I think that this whole platform from the ground up has been built on fairness and has been built on equality and has been built on the fact that we're giving everyone access to crypto arbitrage so it's just not I Again, I get the sentiment, but it's not how it's not how we look at giveaways here at CAT. Um, what is the difference between CAT's old and new smart contract? We have to bear more changes. In the new smart contract. Bear more charges, sorry. In the new, no, 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 no. So there's not going to be. Uh, you provide us with the animated video presentations of CAT. Uh, what would the animated video presentations be? Is the telegram stickers, maybe? I, again, I'm not too sure. Um, since KYC is compulsory in the new CAT system, how many accounts can one individual make on one name? Uh, we are sticking with our policy of no duplicate accounts. This is mostly in the interest of, um, in the interest of not having people abuse the referral system, because again, I've said this before and I'll say it again, we're trying to do a good thing. We don't want, you know, not very good people coming along and essentially just trying to abuse the system to make a quick buck that's not what we're about that's not what we want our community to be about and that's not the kinds of people that we want to attract so that policy is very much staying um does the new platform have options to see our direct referral teams name email mobile number uh this is a must mm, i wouldn't say it's a must i mean it's it's a data thing it's very much a data thing we don't collect that kind of data never mind process it or publish it so it would be it would be a big step up for us again this is something we could have a look at if there is significant demand but it's just not um i'm going to stop sharing my screen now actually it's not uh oh, hold on there we go yeah it's not something that you know it's not something that's very easy to implement and it's not something that uh i think is that necessary to be honest i think the way that we work now with just wallet numbers and just volume is is probably fine for the majority for the majority of people at the end of the day you could always keep track of who you signed up with it's not you know it's not the end of the world so i'll, I'll make a note of this and if it keeps cropping up we'll think about bringing this in but it's a big jump for us in terms of in terms of data and in terms of the privacy of each individual community member so it's not something no it's not something we are looking at right now and that being the last question um i guess i'll wrap up i mean all all i really have to say towards the end is i really want to push on that point again of of please respect every individual involved with the project whether it's me or whether it's one of our leaders or whether it's one of our support staff or whether it's someone working on the website that you've come in contact with just in any case i think you know show show compassion and respect towards your fellow cat community member and, and of course i'm saying this for the one bad apple rather than the bunch but i think you get the point um and with all that said we are at five o'clock now i think i'm gonna wrap up i'll probably be doing another one of these on tuesday next week if I could scratch the time together, it might be at a different time of day, but I'll try and stick to 4 p.m. for you guys. Um, anyways, all that being said, I am immensely grateful for you all 
for coming today. I will probably be seeing you next week in another one of these. I'll have some more materials prepped. Uh, we might do another round of questions too. But until then, I love you all guys and I will see you very, very soon. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for listening to me, Waffle. It's been an absolute pleasure and I'll be back shortly. Recording stopped.